would give it to you. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> it, blew, it blew my cover off. Whoa! That was sweet. Tori's still standing, but only just. Didn't knock you over on your butt, though. No, but it definitely knocked me back. It lifted my shield, and then it just ripped the newspaper to shreds. That 50 PSI shot of air notched up a wind speed of 46 miles per hour, and Tari struggled to stay standing. It looks like the team have their knockout numbers. So really the indication if your paper shreds when the train passes, you're you, standing too close. You might be standing too close. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not prepared for this kind of wind speed hitting you, I don't think you would have the reaction time to be able to hold yourself up. You would possibly fall into the train. But the big question is yet to be answered. Can a full-scale train generate that kind of wind speed in reverse? Will the wake at the rear of the train suck at 46 miles per hour? So, Robert, have you ever seen anything suck towards the track, you know, on the station? Me, personally, I never have. Uh, I've heard of it. So Robert, our driver, thinks it's plausible. But the engine he's driving is hauling two passenger cars, which we know create less turbulence than freight cars. But this legend involves unsuspecting commuters waiting on a platform. So it's really the best way to test the myth. Yeah, I, I was very um, pessimistic about this myth until I saw the size of this train. It's huge. I can't believe anybody's going to give us something this big to play with. I could see this actually being true. If Ted could speak, he'd probably be screaming, why me? But misery truly does love company, and he won't be alone out there. Something else we'd like to try today, we brought a baby stroller with us. It's not part of the myth, but train traveling parents often have their stroller with them. And because it's on wheels, the guys think it will help illustrate the suction effect. The stroller may get pulled off the platform even if Ted and his 200 pounds are unmoved. Now his back wants to be to the train. It's like he's got a headphone on. He's listening to music. He doesn't know the train's coming. OK. The expression says it all. Ted ain't exactly confident, but Tari thinks his chances of survival are good. Uh, my feeling is the train's going to come through. There's probably going to be a lot of rumbling. It might knock the dummy over, but I don't think the suction is actually going to be strong enough to pull the dummy in. The last thing to do before the potentially lethal drive-by is to set up Grant's wind speed gauges. With that done, it's time to set this test in motion. Three miles away, Robert set his train a rolling, slowly building up to the legal speed limit of 79 miles per hour. Should be here any second. That was intense. Ted's been tipped sideways, and the stroller snapped its line. In fact, it's taken out a camera. So the stroller, the the uh, line Just snapped. Make... It got pushed so hard. Are you serious? It sucked that way. Oh, jeez. My god. So any mom that has her stroller that close to the train, but was it suction or was it more just the gust of air that pushed him over? With so much happening so quickly, it's difficult to tell what's going on. But the replay seems to indicate the stroller being blown along the platform. And there's no sign of Ted getting sucked onto the tracks. With no sign of the mythical suction on the first run, it's take two. Oh! But this time, the train will be going backwards, with the blunt end leading and the aerodynamic engine at the rear. Dude, look at the stroller. Oh my god! Look at the stroller. It got thrown <coughs> off the platform. <coughs> what? Incredibly, Ted is still standing. He wasn't even blown back. But Grant's battery of wind gauges has its own tale to tell. On our first run, with the train coming this way, yeah. and the aerodynamic tip leading, yeah. we had, uh, parallel to the train, wind speed of 49.9. The second run, 
with the flat end leading coming this way, yeah. we had on this one, 26.8. Whoa. So the wind speed on that run was actually less. So according to the figures from the chicken cannon tests, both runs generated enough wind to make a typical guy stumble. But it's all blowing straight out or parallel to the track. It looks like the turbulence moving with the train and away from the track trumps any wake effect there may be following the train. But Grant is a hardcore train spotter and wants just one more try. I'm down here at ground zero monitoring these anemometers and it is really scary as the train passes and this huge cloud of dust and everything and it gets stuff in my teeth. It's, it's very exciting though, but, but scary. Once again, Robert the driver winds his engine up to full speed. Ted finds himself face down on the platform and the stroller's missing in action. But how did Grant survive the blast? Can we calibrate it by the gravel in your face and the depth that it's gone? Yeah. So no one was sucked onto the train tracks for a dice with death. And with no obvious results, it's back to the shop to study the high-speed camera and piece together the data. It looks like all the wind is running parallel to the yeah, train. I, I'm definitely not seeing any suction. The first and third runs had the most violent effects, but there was no sign of any suction. The winds blasting outwards and sideways were far stronger than any vortex that may have been created behind. If Ted had felt any suction, that tie rope would be as taut as fencing wire. Knocked his headphones right off, and look at the stroller. It's there just it goes. lifting, and it's running parallel to the train in the slipstream. All that turbulence is parallel. So in the end, there's nothing like a full-scale test to sort the fact from fiction. And this one looks like a foregone conclusion. So what do we come to for a conclusion for train section? Oh, it's busted. Totally busted. But still really, really dangerous yeah. to stand that close. You don't want to stand nah. very close to the train. <laughs> you, you do not want to be there. Unless you're psycho.